Hibiki, once more, one of my favorite candidates to do a blooms for you intro and outro, dedicating these gorgeous blooms from Dendrobium Hibiki to everybody that watches this video. Your time is so much appreciated. I do try to make sure that I've got clusters of blooms for everybody that watches this video to say thank you to you for being here. And as I'm talking, I'm just making sure that no, there are no bug attacks on my hibiki. Last year, I was sort of thinking that the aphids were getting too comfortable with its space. And um, no, no thank you. Don't like that. So I do take advantage every once in a while, go in and have a look-see. This white spot here is not to be confused with anything, but Mr. Gecko showing that he was doing his rounds last night. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for being here for another episode of Blooms For You. Know that your time is appreciated, your support is appreciated, and Dendrobium Hibiki with all the clusters of blooms, blooms for you. But I have some other gems and a first time bloomer as well in this episode. So let's go have a look, see what else has opened up. And yes, we have reached the year 2021 of my list of names in the Blooms For You episode. Hooray, <laughs> a milestone. Orchids take their time, so I appreciate your patience, but know that if you've left a comment, if I've seen that you have subscribed, I have a running list going, your name is there and you will get a bloom. For now, it's Dendrobium Hibiki for everybody that's not mentioned here today. Phalaenopsis KTC Kao Kicha Kut, crossed with Corningiana. Blooms one and two on a spike that was extended from last year. There we go, blooms one and two. And for the 2021 spike, blooms three and four, four, Bovanchik 69 and Gennaro Arellano. These two blooms from a brand new spike on my Kao Kicha Kut, crossed with Corningiana bloom for the two of you. And since the last time I filmed her, we finally have a fragrance, Fruit Loops, something like that, Skittles with a little bit of dust in it. You know, the smell of cereal, you open it and it's like, hmm, sweet, but you can feel the, the dust of the cereal as well in your nose. That is what she smells like right now. Even though it is not quite a sunny day, there is a very, very obvious fragrance coming from her at this point in time, which she didn't have when the first two blooms opened. But what she still has is all her beautiful markings, all those colors, everything is going on in that bloom. That fuzzy lip right there. And they're not going to be flat. As you can see, the older blooms are still cupped a little bit forward, which is a shame, which is why it took me a while to get used to the, these blooms because they don't flatten out and present themselves. It seems like they're holding on to their beauty and saying, now nah, you want to have a look at me? You got to come in closer. And that's why we are very close. <laughs> But they're very, very beautiful. I have to say they do have a little bit of a charm to them. Also, when there is a bit more sun, it does make it much more difficult to film them because of all the detail that's going on in there. But they start to have a little bit of a glow, especially all the yellow bits around the edges. They really, really start to stand out. But I'm glad I've got a little bit of an overcast day today because I would not know now where to go on the patio to be able to give a proper show of these gorgeous blooms to Bovanchik69 and Gennaro Arellano to say thank you to both of you very, very much for your support on my channel. Really appreciate that you're here. I just hope that you do like the blooms that I have chosen for the two of you as my thank you to you. Look at who has surprised me with blooms this year. I have eight blooms that are blooming for J. Bud and Imar Havel on my Catlianthe Zagarig Wax African Beauty. Drum roll, drum roll, drum roll. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? My goodness, considering the division that this orchid went through last year, and a growth that is, isn't even the size of the previous year's growth when I divided her. Look, 
That's the top of the spike. That is the top of last year's growth. The spike of last year's growth was, well, can't see my hand now, but it was up here. <laughs> and look at her. I am so happy. I cannot tell you because these are eight blooms. Last year I got nine blooms. I don't know what the maximum is that a Zagari wax can bloom, how many blooms she can bloom, but to get eight on a growth that is half the size of the previous year's growth where I got nine, yes, I call that result. Because look, she's not even a bifoliate on this growth. And yet, bolt upright, gorgeous, and her fragrance. Oh my goodness. Now, not everybody is into port wine, just so happens that I am, but this is port wine from the finest, finest barrel. Aged beautifully. There is nothing watery in your nose when you smell it, and it has that hint of sweetness of the grapes. Just divine. Really, this orchid has everything in it. The blooms are strong and they are waxy. The gloss that you see here, that is that waxy texture that these give, they are just a statement in themselves. Mm, I'm so happy I can give these blooms to J. Bud and Imar Havel. Fantastic. I was not expecting this. I was expecting to say a reset. Give me some new roots, any little growth. I don't care. Give me some new roots. And well, she's now giving me roots as well. Yippee yay yay. I have no ants. I have no mealybugs. I have a lot of happy sap. Well, we agree on one thing, the word happy. Lots of happy sap going on here. And I am gushing with happiness. <laughs> but yeah, oh my goodness, this orchid just does it for me. You know, sometimes you get buds and they blast and then you're like, oh, that was disappointing, why? But when an orchid blooms and you're like, nope, it's not going to bloom this year because it's on its way to getting reset and then we'll see the blooms again in 2022 and then this happens. Cartwheels around the patio. So Jay Bud and Imar Hawe, Tatlianfe, Zagari Wax, African Beauty, what a beauty. She blooms for you. Thank you so, so much for your support on my channel. I'm really, really pleased. I could bring this orchid back into the viewfinder in 2021 and dedicate my eight blooms to the two of you. Appreciate you. I hope you're doing well in your part of the world. Thank you for your support. I'm just going to add this clip. Because you may or may not have seen the care collab on this orchid, I'm going to just clarify the color of the blooms. They are pretty, pretty good here in the viewfinder but I'm going to just correct the color in your imagination a little bit, okay? Because even if I put my hand over, I am not getting, I am not getting the colors to match what I see. Uh, like this? No. Okay, so imagine the ripest, glossiest blackberry. That would be the petals and the sepals. All right, the dark depth of blackberries. Then imagine dragon fruit the scarlet, deep, dark color of the pink of the dragon fruit. Those are the true color combinations of this Zagari wax, African beauty. Just wanted to quickly add that in. I know this is getting far too long, but in case you haven't seen the Care Collab, that's where I describe the color much, much better. But there you go, blackberry and dragon fruit, done. Late afternoon, I'm gonna risk it. I want to film my Jumelia Aborescence in the sun. Fifth bloom for Susie Erickson. Fifth bloom. I am really pushing it, but I wanted to show you what she looks like with four blooms still hanging on. Really, if I'm being honest, it should be three blooms hanging on because this one is yellowing, but I couldn't resist it. I couldn't help myself. I think these look so cute. And filming her in the sun, I, I'm getting away with it a little bit because of the reflection, but I hope that it doesn't take away from the cuteness of the blooms themselves. It is late afternoon, and I think that maybe the light isn't too harsh. Isn't this adorable? Fifth bloom, Susie Erickson. Thank you, thank you, thank you so very much for being here on my channel, for supporting me. 
really appreciate you. My fifth bloom of Jumelia arborescens, she blooms for you. Very, very pleased that I have gotten this orchid to bloom with five spikes this year. Individual spikes, individual blooms, but the potential is there because look at the future. Down here, we've got plantlets coming in left, right and center. That might be another three years before we see them bloom, but still, even if there's only one bloom per spike, if she does this every year, then we have something to look forward to next year because this is the growth back here that is now starting where she will be producing spikes from next year. So I am really glad that my little Jumelia arborescens has started to mature to the point that she can put out five spikes in one season. Pretty amazing, even though they're not long lasting, which is a shame because they are the cutest. They are fragrant at night, but very, very faint. It's not a strong fragrance at all. There's a hint of jasmine, there's a hint of vanilla, the angrecoid fragrance, you might say, the typical one, but it is so, so faint. The fact that it is a nocturnal fragrant orchid probably plays tricks on your brain and you think you can smell something, well, I can't. But the, apparently the moth that pollinates this one would find it attractive. So that's all that we need to know at this point, even if I can't smell anything distinct enough to say, oh yes, delicious at night. But Susie Erickson, I ramble, I babble. I want to say thank you so very, very much for your support on my channel with my fifth bloom, well, your fifth bloom of Jumelia arborescens. Thank you, Susie Erickson. One more time with my Neophenicia falcata, specifically for spikes six and seven, which I'm giving to Marco Antonio Hernandez Sanchez and Carla Hill as a thank you so much for your support on my channel. All this time, really appreciate it. I saw in the previous clips, even though it is pretty to see this Neo in the sun, yeah, it does kind of white out the beautiful white bloom. So we're back in the shady spot on the east side of my patio. Ah, just to once more enjoy these cuties once more in a blooms for you series because that's it i have seven spikes for the year 2021 and that is six and seven right here for as long as she is in bloom there will be peaks and glimpses of her of course but for now to say thank you so very much to marco antonio hernandez sanchez and carla hill my little neo is featured in the viewfinder for you thank you ever ever so much for being here on my channel and for your support. I have quetched one of the older spikes a little bit further back because it was kind of blocking the view of the fresh blooms but you see with Neo Falcata it is so difficult to cut off spikes where the blooms are going a little bit yellow because they are still fragrant. <laughs> yes I know every little counts for me in my books and until they don't literally fall off in my hands when I brush them like this then they stay on with that exquisite, exquisite lemon powder sugar fragrance. I don't want to miss those, even if they are starting to color a little bit. That fragrance is every little bloom stays on until it falls off. <laughs> anyway, not to spoil the look, not to take away from the crisp, white, pristine, still intact blooms of this gorgeous Neo Falcata. Oh, I'm going to miss her, already missing her, and they're still here with me. But anyway, for now, Marco Antonio Hernandez Sanchez and Carla Hill, my spike number six and number seven, they bloom for you. Thank you ever so much for your support here on my channel. So, so very much appreciated. Danopia acidensis, the gift that keeps on giving. So happy to be able to share three more blooms to say thank you so much to Silvia Soon to Burn, Robinho Amigos de Avores, and Neil P. I'm assuming Robinho Amigo de Avores is better than if I said uh, Robinho Amigo de Arvores. I don't know. I hope that I can get that clarification in the comments below, but I hope that you know who you are 
when I say your name, even if I did not pronounce it quite correctly. But three more Stanhopia acidensis blooms, two Sylvia soon to burn, Robinho Amigo de Chavores, and Neil P. Again, I am surrounded by the wafts of cinnamon, the big red, nothing has changed. These opened yesterday. I was hoping to get them filmed yesterday, but it was extremely windy. And the camera obviously has a lot of work to do to pick up on the beauty, the detail and everything of these blooms. The baskets were swinging around a little bit too much and it just looked a little bit messy through the viewfinder. The focus in, the focus out, the focus in. Anyway, long story short, I think we've got a perfect day today. Just a little bit of bobbing going on, but that adds to the charm of how they present themselves in my blooming alley. You can see in the background there, spent spikes. Yeah, beauty is short-lived, that is for sure. So day two, looking as fresh and as remarkable, smelling as gorgeous as ever. Love it, I'm gonna miss them when they're gone, but to be honest with you, I will be happy to get my blooming alley back and won't have to bend over so much. That is going to be a relief because then they can come down and it's just, you know, walk through without worrying. The two baskets are now going nuts as well on new growths already. It's all kickstarting now for next year. Super pleased about that. But I really want to point out Silvio soon to burn Robinho Amigos de Avores and Neil P and dedicate my next three and probably last three Stanhopia blooms of 2021. There have been 16 in total for the first time that I've ever seen Stan blooms. Very, very happy to have gotten to this point, despite a few failures along the way. While I'm navigating my way around hob material, inorganic growing, as opposed to baskets and letting these beauties just go into beast mode. Yeah, it's been super, super interesting very very rewarding i've learned a lot about them so sylvia soon to burn robinho amigos de sabores neil p thank you so much for your support on my channel my three stand blooms they go to you well just have a look at this little cutie <laughs> Sophie Molvrier, I hope I'm saying that correctly. This is my Speciosa crossed with Violacea, first time bloomer for me. And I am very, very happy that this first bloom kind of tells me she is not mislabeled. And her fragrance also tells me she is not mislabeled because I do get some great bubblegum fragrance out of her. Hubba Bubba comes to mind. Yeah, she is just, oh, I'm so, so pleased to see this cutie little bloom right here. Not much speciosa going on and I'm fine with that. There's a lot of violacea going on. Absolutely, I'm, I'm really, really pleased with this little bloom. And I want to say thank you to you, Sophie Molvrier, via this little bloom, first time bloomer for me, for your support here on my channel. My little speciosa crossed with violacea is not a strong plant. She is not as stable in the pot as I would like her to be. She came to me very, very weak, but we gave it a go anyway in Leca Selmi Hydro, and I have a bit of sphagnum moss just on the top. I'm letting that degrade a little bit because eventually I'm going to remove that once she gives me some sign of new roots. But shame, this little one is not the happiest of campers, but she seemed to be strong enough to produce the latest three leaves in my collection right here. There seems to be a little bit more potential in the pot than I probably can give her credit for from what I see on the outside, simply because if she wasn't getting what she needed in the pot, she would not have produced her first spike nor her first bloom. All this would have aborted. When she came, she was tiny, she was bashed up. This was a leaf that had a lot to deal with during transportation. She has had some magnesium deficiency, so it's all happened with this little one. But we are trying to correct that. We're getting there. And clearly the proof is in the pudding with this cute, cute little bloom. 
I wonder if I can get in a bit closer while she's in the shade without blinding out the colors when the sun gets on her. I find this so charming. And she also has a fuzzy lip that reminds me of a cat's tongue. When I went in to sniff her, I could feel that little fuzziness on my upper lip. It's so cute. And what I always liked about the violaceas when I saw them in pictures was the little tips of the sepals being, you know, green chartreuse color and a little like a spiky little crown on the top. Yeah, she has um, won my heart. I'm going to fight for her, continue fighting for her because I hope to have some more roots coming and then there might need to be some readjustment in the pot. Something has to happen, I believe, for the future strength of this orchid, because I would love to see more of this. Sophie Molvrier. My bubblegum, hubba bubba, fragrant. Come here, show yourself, don't be shy. My bubblegum, hubba bubba, fragrant. First time bloomer, speciosa, crossed with Violacea. She blooms for you. Thank you, thank you so much for your support here on my channel. And here he is, avec un petit du soleil. Not too shabby. Oh, <laughs> yes, it's creepy. My love for this orchid, it's creepy. I get it. It's also maybe repetitive. However, I wanted to say thank you so much for watching while showing off the bright, bright hot pink and orange colors of these blooms with a little bit of sunshine on them. My goodness, if you're still here, let's go in a little bit closer and see if we can detect through the camera the crystalline texture, the sparkles these blooms have. Yeah, this orchid is just Apart from no fragrance, it's got it all. Thank you everybody for watching. So appreciate your time. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.